Now we're going to solve a 1D conduction heat transfer. I have a wall here, which is one meter thick, or one meter in this uh, length, five meters in height, and apparently this is not drawn to scale. The thickness of the wall is um, 10 centimeters. One end of this wall is at 120 degrees C, the other end is at 50 degrees C, and this is the conduction of the wall. So let's look at solving this problem using ANSYS APDL. I've written a script here. It's very simple. And because we're familiar with most of it, I'll jump through the uh, lines and explain the only parts that are new in this example or a script. So first I'm finishing everything that I've been working on and then I'm clearing the database in these two lines, the first two lines. And then line four is starts the pre-processing. Start, let me turn on all caps. Start pre-processing. Now one thing that is new is the element type that I'm using in here. So ET is element type one is 279 which is a solid but it has some difference compared to y86 and other structural elements so if I go to element type references and find 279 which is in here, solid 279, is a 3D thermal element. So it has thermal behavior. And its degrees of freedom are temperature. So now I know that element type 279 is the right element type that I would pick for thermal analysis, such as 1D conduction heat transfer. And then if I move down, the material properties that it gets are K KXX, KYY, KZZ, which is basically the conduction coefficients, density, and a specific heat. But I don't need the density or a specific heat, so I will only give the uh, KXX, the isotropic conduction coefficient, and the only degree of freedom, again, is temperature for this element type. So I pick the element type 279, and I give the material properties. So set conduction coefficient to 10 and then I'm using the block command to draw the block of a wall that I want to analyze in here so draw a block so the block command takes six inputs if I open it here under B block as six inputs basically the X Y and Z's of the six key points that it requires to create the block so I've set 0 and 1 which means go from 0 to 1 in the X direction 0 and 5 which means go from 0 to 5 in the Y direction and 0 and point 1 which means go in the um, Y, Z direction for point 0.1. So if I copy this part of the code in ANSYS, I'll see that a block is created for me in 3D. See a very thin block. Next, I want to mesh my element type or element or uh, block. I set the element size to 0 0.05. So set element size to 0 0.05 and then set the active type real constant and material properties to the appropriate numbers I've given here all of them have reference numbers 1 so that's that and vmesh is short for v mesh volume so mesh volume 1 I only have one volume and that's so I use vmesh and one I create meshes for or elements for that volume if I find the vmesh here 
generates nodes and volume elements with volumes. So if I copy that portion of the code in my APDL and paste it here, see that my block is meshed into tiny elements. Now it's time to apply boundary conditions. So I said at this wall, or at this side of the wall, I want to apply a 120 degrees C temperature, and here I want to apply 50 degrees C temperature. So I'm saying select nodes by location where x is equal to 0. So n cell is for selecting nodes, s is for selection instead of also or reselect. LOC is for, short for location, it's item for n cell, and the component is x, and the value is 0. So this means select nodes at x equals 0. And then using d command, which is for degree of freedom, apply temperature of 120 degree C to selected nodes and then select everything. I'm doing a similar thing here. Now I'm selecting nodes at location x equals 1. So select nodes at x equals 1 and then apply temperature of 50 degree Celsius to selected nodes and then again select everything. And finally I come to solution and solve and in post process post processing I plot the temperatures for notes so let's copy this portion of the code that applies the boundary conditions here see that temperatures are applied and then I can solve it and then I can see the temperature gradient across the wall I click the wrong key solution is done and this is how the temperature varies across the wall so we can see that happening now if I wanted to plot this say a graph I could come here and I could create a path so let's show a 3d view of it I want to define path and before that let me do eplot to show me the plots and zoom on here for example so I want to create a path by nodes I want to select this node and this node and click OK here doesn't matter so I need at least two two nodes for this to be to create a path a path is basically a line between two points on which I want to draw some uh, results so I OK this give a name path one number of data sets so how many results I want to apply to this um, path Maximum is 30, and I'm not going to change it. And how much or what, what division I want to give to this path? I can give it any number. I can make it 100 or 50, which means the distance between this point and that point, the two endpoints of my path, are going to be divided into 50 points. So I do that. My path is created, which I can actually plot the path shows the path is in here 
Then I come to map onto path and apply temperature to that path. And then I can say plot on graph temperature. So I see a linear shift of temperature along the length of my wall, which probably I didn't pick the last node. That's why it doesn't end at 53.5, or it doesn't end at 50. And also the length of the wall should be one, but here it goes up to 0.953. Probably I picked the wrong node when I was picking the path, but we see the linear change of temperature across that path. So we learned how to model a simple 1D conduction heat transfer in ANSYS APDL.